guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm excited to share with you my itinerary for our 2020 trip. I shared it with you guys back in, I believe, 2017. Why is my phone? I don't understand. I shared it with you guys back in, but I could search the web for it. I'm not even talking to you. <laughs> okay, where was I? So in the past, I have shared with you my itinerary before, but a lot has changed since then. And on our 2019 trip, what I did was I shared our expectations versus reality, which was a lot of fun to film because basically what I did was I shared my entire itinerary with you step by step. But then when I got back from my trip, I talked about what actually ended up happening. Because let's face it, we put a lot of time and work and energy into building our itinerary for Walt Disney World. And in the end, it's really just a wish list of everything that we hope to do. And it doesn't always go as planned. And it's very important to me to have a focus and know what I'm doing every single day. But it's also very important to know that things can change and it's okay to just go with the flow sometimes because it's not always going to work out exactly the way that you had hoped it would. So here is my wish list. <laughs> I have a whole big binder filled with information. We're leaving for our trip in less than 10 days from when I'm filming this, but you'll likely be watching this either while I'm there or just when I get back because I am going to share with you every single detail of uh, where we're going to be, when, what resorts we're staying at, all of that good stuff. And I hope that this helps you in maybe putting together an itinerary for your upcoming trip. I am a travel agent. I work for Mickey World Travel, so I kind of know what I'm doing. At least I like to think I do. <laughs> okay, so let me get right into our itinerary and I'll show you some of the things that I printed out just to help me out while we are away. I'm staying at two resorts that I've never stayed at before. I'm staying at the Riviera and I'm also staying at Caribbean Beach Resort. I'm super excited to check out the new Riviera Resort because it is on the Skyliner route, which is really helpful. And Caribbean Beach is also on the Skyliner route and it has been newly refurbished. So I'm really excited to see the updated rooms and just the entire layout of Caribbean Beach is really beautiful right now. So I'm excited to see that. And I chose my dates in accordance to what parks I'm going to be at. So the dates that I chose to stay at the Riviera are January 25th, 26th, checking out on the 27th. And then on the 27th, I'm checking into Caribbean Beach and we're staying 27th, 28th, and 29th. So I'm doing a split stay just because I want to check out both of the resorts. And I'm staying at Caribbean Beach at the end of our week because it has a direct route to Hollywood Studios and our last two days we're going to spend in Hollywood Studios and I'll talk more about that when I get to the end of our uh, itinerary. But day one of our trip, and I'll just show you guys my, I have all of our reservations and things in uh, this little file here, but I did put together an itinerary and I used touringplans.com. I know I talked about it before, but if you just plug in your dates and you can plan each day so you can plan your park days it will tell you the hours that the park is open it will tell you the hours of all the shows on that day it'll let you know if there's extra magic hours that day so all of the information that you need to know in regards to your trip they already have it there so it's so worth the investment it's not that expensive i want to say it's somewhere between 10 and 15 dollars a year and i've been doing it for at least a decade now it's really worth it to me Okay, here are some of the helpful tools that I printed out to bring on our trip. I have the map of the Riviera Resort, and I also circled all of the locations that are most important to me. So I circled the first area where we're going to be dropped off by the Magical Express, and then from there I kind of mapped it out to how I need to get from the drop-off area from Magical Express all the way over to the Skyliner. And we'll be going through the lobby, so I don't know if I'm going to do check-in on my app or if I actually want to go in and see if my room is ready. I guess we'll just see what time our flight lands and how late we get there and stuff like that. But the plan is to get dropped off at Riviera and go on the Skyliner directly to Epcot. And I have also printed out <laughs> the Skyliner route and I've highlighted um, the days that I'm going to be taking it so for instance day one Riviera going to Epcot 
and then day two we're taking a bus to magic kingdom day three we're taking a bus to animal kingdom and i just have that all there in my notes and then day four and five we're taking the skyliner from caribbean beach to hollywood studios so that is the plan that is the parks that i'm going to be going to and the days that I'm going to them. And I had to decide that 180 days in advance of my trip because if you guys are familiar with booking a Disney trip, you need to know your dining 180 days in advance. And although I am a annual pass holder, my kids just have base tickets. So we don't have the ability to park hop. So I have to not only decide where I'm going to dine on which days, I kind of have to decide my park days well in advance. So that's when I look at the crowd calendar and make sure that I'm picking the right days for the dining <laughs> because I don't want to go on a day when the park is really, really crowded. So that was done a long time ago, picking out those park days. So our first day is Epcot, and that's going to be on Saturday, January 25th. It was actually not going to be too crowded that day. We're going for Festival of the Arts, so I'm really excited for that. Um, as soon as we get there, I have a fast pass. I'm hoping that we make it in time. So I am hoping that we can get to the resort. Our flight is on JetBlue. It leaves at 7.34 in the morning, and it's anticipated to land at 10.31 a.m. So I'm hoping that I can get to the Riviera around noontime and take the Skyliner straight to Epcot and hopefully we can have lunch before our first Fast Pass. Festival of the Arts is going on and there's always lots of fun snacks and just variation of different types of food that you can have for Festival of the Arts. So I'm excited to maybe go to some of those food stands and get something fun and unique to eat that is kind of Festival of the Arts themed. And then we're going to head over to Spaceship Earth. That's our first Fast Pass at 1.15. When you go to touringplans.com, they'll tell you the time that you should arrive at the attraction. It will also tell you how long you're going to be walking, how busy it's going to be. There's like all of these different categories. So if you see all of these different sections, that's what that is. But we're going to go to Spaceship Earth first. Our Fast Pass is 12.50, so that means from 12.50 to 1.50, we can ride Spaceship Earth. And then we have a little bit of a break, so I was hoping that we could meet the Disney Pals. <laughs> and I wanted to head over to China because it's the Chinese New Year on that day, and I just thought they might have something fun going on, so I do want to go over there. I also have Turtle Talk with Crush, and then we have a Fast Pass for Soarin' between 2 and 3 p.m. So after that we are going to head over to the garden grill restaurant because we have dining reservations for the broadway festival of the arts uh dining package that they have they do these broadway inspired shows throughout the day in the theater at epcot and i really like to get good seating for that because we're really into live entertainment and broadway productions and things so that's going to be a lot of fun so we're doing the garden grill and then we're going to go to the Seas with Nemo and Friends, and I have a Fast Pass for that from 6.05 to 7.05. The thing with um, Fast Passes is some parks don't really have a lot of great options, and they are also tiered in certain parks where you can't pick like the headliner rides as your three Fast Passes. So that makes it a little bit tricky, especially over at Hollywood Studios, you'll see that, and you don't always have the best selection for Fast Passes. Then I want to go see the Grand Fiesta Tour starring the three Calabar Calba I can't say it, Calaberos, Calaberos, okay. The three Caballeros. And then I also want to make sure that we have time to do the Festival of the Arts photos. They have all of these different sections set up where you can take really fun photographs where it looks like you're actually in some famous paintings and photos and things. So you can check out my Festival of the Arts last year if you want to see those. They were really funny and my daughters thought it was hysterical and they totally want to do that again. And I have Frozen Ever After on here. I also have right on the top Beauty and the Beast sing along in France. If you go over to France, they do have a movie over there and now they have incorporated Beauty and the Beast into the movie. And being a huge Beauty and the Beast fan, I definitely want to head over to Impressions de France, I think is what it's called, the name of the movie, and see how they have included Beauty and the Beast a little like sing along that they have going on. So that should be a lot of fun. Okay. 
And then we're going to do Frozen Ever After. Definitely, I'm hoping the line isn't too long for that, or hopefully maybe we can even get Fast Passes for it. Once we've used up our other three Fast Passes, we can go ahead and make another one. And then we have the Disney on Broadway concert series at eight o'clock, so we'll see the eight o'clock show, and that's followed by Epcot Forever at 9 p.m. So we have a very full <laughs> first day. Well, again, this is a wish list. Don't know if it's all gonna get done but it sounds like a lot of fun, doesn't it? Hopefully we get enough rest that night because the next day is the Magic Kingdom Day and the Magic Kingdom Day is always my favorite day and it's always the hardest one for me to end. For like when I'm leaving the Magic Kingdom, I am really holding back tears because I know it's gonna be probably a year or more before I see it again and it's my favorite park, which is why I usually like to keep it towards the end of the week but this time it's at the beginning of the week because of Hollywood Studios. Um, the Rise of the Resistance is very popular right now, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, and I like to do the more popular things at the end of the week. So that is a travel agent little trick for you guys. If you have something that you really want to see that is one of the headliner rides going on, you always want to make that at the very end of the week because it just means that you can get your fast passes for it that much further in advance. Can you understand that? So that's the way you want to do it. Sunday, January 26th. I feel like this video is going to be really long. <laughs> On January 26th, we are still at the Riviera Resort and I have Peter Pan's Flight as our first attraction because that one does tend to get busy quick as well as The Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh followed by The Haunted Mansion and then I also have Pirates of the Caribbean and somewhere in that time frame I'm thinking we're going to be falling into an early lunch. I hope to eat lunch around 11 o'clock. Another pro tip, if you go for an earlier lunch you might be ahead of the crowd so try to have lunch around 11. We usually kind of skip breakfast, not totally but I bring like mini muffins or oatmeal or kind of snacky breakfast items to the resort with me so that in the morning we can just have juice, coffee, water, and something to hold us over until an early lunch, which is usually gonna be around 11, 11.30. So I'm hoping that we might be able to get seated at Be Our Guest. I was not able to get a reservation for this this time around, but um, I'm gonna hope that we can get in. We did last time. On our last trip, the Magic Kingdom was actually really, really busy, and we walked right in to Be Our Guest, and I was like shocked, but it worked out, so you never know. Okay, and then we have our Fast Pass rides. I have Space Mountain from 3 to 4 p.m., Big Thunder Mountain from 4 to 5 p.m., Seven Dwarfs Mine Train from 5.15 to 6.15, and somewhere in that time between rides, we're definitely going to go to Aloha Isle so that I can get my Dole Whip Pineapple Upside Down Cake Ice Cream. That's one of my favorite snacks at the Magic Kingdom, so I actually have it on my to-do list here for the Magic Kingdom can see it right in here because it's definitely something that I want to make a point of doing. And then we have dining reservations at the Plaza Restaurant, followed by Happily Ever After and Once Upon a Time. So it's another really, really full day. Unfortunately, on this trip, we don't really have an opportunity to go back to the resort for downtime like I typically like to do on a vacation in Walt Disney World because the days are crazy busy, but it's five days of vacation. Two of those five days are travel days as well, and I just want to do and see it all, and I just, I can't get past that. <laughs> so I do have things on here at the Riviera Resort that I wanted to see, so I made a note. I would like to check out Bar Riva. Um, there's just some places that I am interested in checking out. They have a really nice gift shop and they have really cute Riviera ears that I wanted to see. So I definitely am hoping to somehow find time to check out the resort as well in those couple of days that we're there. Okay, now we're on to Monday, January 27th. We're going to take the bus from the Riviera over to the Animal Kingdom, but before we go to the Animal Kingdom, we have breakfast at Topolino's Terrace at 7.30 in the morning. So it's a character breakfast. The characters have on these really artsy, cute outfits, so I'm excited to see them in the costumes that they have for Topolino's Terrace. And I believe that it is Mickey, Minnie, Donald, Daisy, and is that it? I'm not sure. I have to do more research on that, but I know that it's really cute and I've seen a lot of uh, people vlog it and stuff, so I'm excited to check that out. 
And our first fast pass of the day is Dinosaur at 11.20. And I made it late because I don't want to stress out about leaving really early for the Animal Kingdom on that day because I want to enjoy my breakfast at Topolino's Terrace and maybe that'll be my morning to have the opportunity to check out the gift shop and you know just kind of walk around the resort and just see what it's like there. I'm staying at the Riviera like I, I want to really have some time there to take in the atmosphere. So that morning, I'm hoping to have a little bit more of a leisurely morning. Hopefully we're not too tired and groggy for a 7.30 a.m. breakfast, but we'll see how it goes. And after Dinosaur, which is 10.30 to 11.30 is the actual arrival time. Did I tell you guys 11.30? It messes me up because they give you like the time that you should arrive, but then over here is the fast pass time. So I have to make sure that I remember I have that full hour. So from 10.30 to 11.30, I have to get on Dinosaur. And then I want to go see the Finding Nemo show. That's always a lot of fun. Satuli Canteen for lunch. I love it there. Even if I just get the cheesecake pod, I'll be happy. But they have the cheeseburger pod that I really like. So that's what I'm anticipating getting for lunch. And I'm crazy like that. I already know in advance the restaurants that I'm eating at. I pretty much already know what I'm ordering. Is that crazy? But it's good because if you want to use the app, to order your food in advance, which I highly recommend. A lot of the counter service restaurants do that now. So order from the app and then you can just go pick it up. It'll be ready and waiting for you. So that's what I plan on doing with Satuli Canteen. Then we're going to go to Kilimanjaro Safaris. We have a fast pass from 155 until 255. I have the Girl of Falls Exploration Trail. That's always a fun trail to walk through. And it's really fun when you get to see the gorillas. Navi River Journey, I have a fast pass from 310 until 410. Can you guys believe that I had a fast pass for Avatar Flight of Passage? I had a fast pass for it and I had to switch it up to the Navi River Journey because my daughter Madison decided that she's absolutely positively not going to go on Flight of Passage again because it made her nauseous. And I also get motion sickness, but I was fine on this ride. So I don't know what it was with her. She might have just been having a bad day. Sometimes that happens. She just wasn't feeling well and she doesn't want to go on it. And I didn't want to waste the fast pass and go there and then she would end up not wanting to do it. So I just switched it up to Navi River Journey, which we all love that too but it doesn't need a fast pass nearly as much as <laughs> Avatar Flight of Passage. And I'm disappointed we're gonna miss it, but whatever, what are you gonna do? Okay, and then we're going to Festival of the Lion King. That's another fun show. And then the last thing I have on here is to meet favorite Disney pals at Adventures Outpost because it's always fun to get pictures with the characters. And I love the Animal Kingdom. They're kind of wearing safari outfits, which is super cute. So we'll see. If there's not a long line, we'll do some pictures. I have Memory Maker with my annual pass holder. So that's great. I try to get pictures. So because we're checking into Caribbean Beach on this day, we're not going to stay at the can the Cannibal Kingdom. We're not going to stay at the Animal Kingdom super late. I really have a certain area of Caribbean Beach Resort that I want to stay in. I'm hoping to be in one of the Jamaica buildings because it is close to the Skyliner and it's a water view area of the resort so hopefully we'll be looking out over the water that'll be really nice we'll see but in order to really get the room request that you're asking for you need to check in and talk to somebody at the desk they type it into the computer i will make sure that if i'm making a reservation i'll make sure that they have note of it but more often than not they don't really look too deep into your reservation they just give you the next available room so if you're checking in on the app and you had a room request don't be surprised if you don't get the room you asked for if there's something you really really want definitely go to the desk to check in so that they can see if it's available and give it to you and that is what i want to do at caribbean beach because i really want to be in the jamaica area of the resort and then that night we are headed to Sebastian's for dinner. And that was another reason I wanted a little bit of resort time at Caribbean Beach because I'm hoping at the end of our Animal Kingdom day, I'll have time to shower and get ready. We wanted to kind of dress a little bit nicer that night and that'll give me the time to do that. So that is the plan. And then on here, I just have my little notes. Like I wanna go to Banana Cabana early to have a drink at the pool bar. <laughs> I just wanted to check it out and that's right next to Sebastian's. So hopefully, we will have time to do that too. 
I know I'm overbooking our days and we're probably not going to do half of what I'm talking about, but we're going to try. The effort's going to be there. Okay, so we're on to Tuesday, January 28th, first Hollywood Studios day. So I told you guys I was going to go back to the whole Skyliner thing. I decided to stay at Caribbean Beach on our Hollywood Studios day because there's a direct route from Caribbean Beach directly to Hollywood Studios. But also, if you want to see Rise of the Resistance in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, which I definitely want to see that, the Skyliner doesn't run early enough, and actually neither do the Disney buses. So that was very unfortunate. So I'm probably going to have to Uber over to Hollywood Studios early in the morning so I can get into the park in time to get my boarding pass for Rise of the Resistance. So <laughs> that is the plan. And then I come to find out that the Skyliner is shutting down at 9 p.m. that night and we have Fantasmic at 8. So that might be tricky. <laughs> I need to make it onto the Skyliner to have a quick ride back. So we'll see how that goes. But anyway, that was kind of my dilemma with um, the Skyliner. I'm disappointed that it doesn't run early enough or late enough. So that's kind of aggravating. We're starting our day at Hollywood Studios, hopefully getting into the park early and getting our boarding passes. And then we're going to Oga's Cantina. I have a morning reservation for nine o'clock in the morning. And I know it's kind of a weird time to go to Oga's because it's more of a bar and I was hoping to get in for lunch or dinner, but I have other plans for lunch and dinner on this day. So I really didn't mind. And apparently they have this really good chai tea. It's called Mugan tea and I love a good chai tea latte. So that sounds amazing and I'm excited to try that out. So then I have Millennium Falcon, Star Wars Launch Bay, just check out that whole area. Beauty and the Beast live on stage and I have a fast pass for that. You really don't even need a fast pass for that. But like I said, Hollywood Studios is a little bit tricky with fast passes. We have dinner at 4.15 at 50's Primetime Cafe. I have Star Wars Rise of the Resistance on my list in hopes <laughs> that we get a boarding pass. Slinky Dog Dash, I have a fast pass for that. And Fantasmic, I also have a fast pass for that. And that is my Hollywood Studios day. Finally, we are at Wednesday, January 29th, which is sadly our departure day already. Didn't that go so quick? <laughs> So on our departure day, our flight is leaving at 7.38 at night and landing back here in New Jersey at 10.15 p.m. So I'm thinking I have to leave Hollywood Studios by 4.30ish if I'm going to Uber it, which I might because I think I would rather just have the extra time. The Magical Express really has you going to the airport so, so early and I think I want to try to avoid that. So we'll see how the day goes. But our first plan of attack is to go to Mickey and Minnie starring in the red carpet of dreams, something I haven't seen. I have the Millennium Falcon on this again, just in case we didn't for some reason get to ride it the day before. I have like a backup plan, so I have another opportunity to ride it. Then docking bay seven, food and cargo for again, late breakfast, early lunch kind of a thing, just to get something to eat. And then I have a fast pass for the first time in forever sing along, that's really fun. Um, that's at 12 o'clock, I'm supposed to arrive around 12. Voyage of the Little Mermaid, I'm supposed to arrive between 1.50 and 2.05. And then Toy Story Mania, I'm supposed to arrive between 2.45 and 3.45. And that will likely be our last ride of the day and then we'll be headed back home to New Jersey. So that is my entire trip. <laughs> all the planning, all the thought process, everything that I have been obsessing over for months and months now, all kind of wrapped up in a little package right there. Like that's everything. So that is my entire game plan for my week in Disney. Just everything that I have put together for our five days. I hope that we're able to do it all. And if we're not, I hope that I'm able to deal with that in a calm manner. <laughs> I tend to be highly emotional in Disney. You can ask my kids. It's, it's a lot of pressure because so much time and thought and effort goes into planning a Disney trip. And when you're kind of fantasizing about it, every day and thinking about all of these things that you're so excited to do when something doesn't pan out it does it's disappointing it just it gets really disappointing but i'm gonna be there with my girls and i'm really going to enjoy the memories that we make together no matter what they are so it's all going to be great 
I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that you found it helpful in maybe planning your upcoming trip. Please let me know if you have any questions. Let me know in the comments below. Feel free to email me if you need help planning a trip. I'd be happy to help you out. Like I said, a lot goes into a trip and it is days before my trip and I'm still finding out new things and I'm still tweaking my itinerary because of that. So there's a lot that you need to know. <laughs> Thanks again so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the bell notification if you want to be notified every time I share a new and fun video. Lots of Disney content will be coming up soon and I hope you all have a great day. Take care. Bye.